that Schroeder basically means this heat sink, which is the big, big aluminum part. That's the heat sink. That's what cools, cools the system. And that's the hot end. That's the stuff that actually gets hot. There's some thermal grease. There's some Teflon tubing. We don't need the fan shroud here, so you can put that back. We need the fan. We need a little sock. There's some screws that I provide with it, so we can use those. So the instructions say, step number one. Is, uh, put in, um, that's the nozzle. That's the thing that actually spits out the the film. And this one is, should be 0.4 millimeters. Very tiny. Uh, so you want to get the nozzle in. Orientation will matter. First, the nozzle, the first instruction says, make sure the nozzle goes in the right side. So which is the right side? Here it's showing the side with the three, three holes. So let's screw it in. We'll do it in almost to the end and then just screw it out and be a quarter and put in a heat break. This critical part, it's, it's thin there, but what it does is that it actually breaks the heat, like it prevents the heat from traveling from this hot end, which melts the pl plastic up to the rest of the machine. So, so that's the heat break. Uh, the general idea is you don't want to be turning on the heat break, like putting a lot of pressure on it, you have this th thin little neck. So what we want to do is after after we took out the nozzle just a little bit, we want to tighten the nozzle a little more. Um, Why do you back off the nozzle? Why do you back off it? Because you want to be tight against against the heat break. They bottom out together. But you don't want to be turning this one because it's easy to break. So you want to tighten against now. Now we're going to tighten it for the final later. Like uh, what I prefer is that okay, if you do it all the way in, yeah. quarter turn, right. just a little bit. And then you put that one against it, just by hand. Right. And now you can tighten this one hard against it. So uh, the tool for that would be a little tiny wrench. Yeah, it happens to be a, the number on that one is a seven, a seven millimeter wrench. We probably have some more in there. Don't worry about tightness yet. Screw and heat break. So, so I'm gonna just tighten this down. Okay, bam, you know, just tighten it. So they it bottomed out. You want to be as close as possible because that's the, the heated part there is what the pa plastic passes through. If it's, if it's sticking too far out, it may not get enough heat and it will clog, end up clogging. So you want it to be tight. Okay, there we go. Um, so as shown in the diagram, the, the heat break is on the side with the one hole. The nozzle is on the side with the three holes, or the two holes. Okay. Gather the thermistor parts. So thermistor is the heat sensor, this thing. It's a little thing inside a, a copper jacket. And we're going to cut off the wires later because we don't have this plug. We can just solder it together. So you want to put it in. Where's my thermistor hole? This. It goes, once again, goes all the way through. So you can get it in from one side or the other. It does matter which. So I'm going to look at our extruder here. The idea is that on one side of the heater block, one side you've got the, the height sensor. The other side you've got open, so you want to have the wires go on the open way. Now we have to just figure out which way that is once we put this into the... Um, so I'm actually going to have to play with this a little bit because I cannot tell offhand by looking at it. I have to look at the extruder parts. So you've got this thing. Which way is this thing pointing? To the left. And how do they describe the orientation? They just say pay attention to it depends on the machine you're using. So let's, let's assume that is good for now. We're going to take a tiny little screw and fit that, fix that thermistor. And they, they have the tool. So here you got to kind of pay attention to all these parts. And this is, the, I think, the hardest part of the build here. So it's a tiny little, little set screw. And I'll put that in there and grab onto the, yeah, so do that, and then just, not hard, because it's, that's just a, you're going to crush that thermistor there. 
So let's say we've got this next. And then down, check the, uh, check the resistance through it. We won't worry about that for now. We'll, we'll do that later. Um, okay, now the heat element. The heat element, they say you want to point it typically the same way as the uh, thermistor is pointing. And that's because we want all the wires going one direction. So point it the same way. So this thing is a resistor. Yeah. This is, you put electricity through it and it heats up. Yeah. That's all it is. It's like a light bulb <laughs> without the light. So okay. A coil around a ceramic core. So it's got a metal piece around whatever's inside. Yeah. Uh, what's it, you think it's ceramic inside? I don't know what's inside. So here we're going to now tighten that down. Not too hard, but what I'm seeing is a pin like get it like centered halfway uh, so it sticks out a little bit one way and sticks out a little bit the other way okay so it's it's saying tighten the m3 by 10 socket dome screw with the m3 washer on it so they call for a washer so that's a little m3 washer three millimeter tighten it they provide the little wrench. So that's tight, and then just pull on it. It's tight. Tug the thermistor. It says check that it's in. It's in. Next. Heater block, heat sink, heat sink, thermal paste. So the idea is this heat break, in order for it to function, you have to have good conduction into this cooler. This is what the fan blows against to cool the, cool the part here. The idea is that... You want to transition from solid filament in here as quickly as possible into molten state. And there's like a mystery zone, like a transition zone in there. Um, you want to make sure that that doesn't get stuck. That's why you have the heat break. So you go from the very hot on the end through that little piece that's very thin, so it minimizes conduction, and then the cool part here. So you're trying to be solid in this area here, uh, and you want to be molten here. because because when you print, you also retract to, to prevent oozing from happening. So you have to have, the, I guess, the clearer the distinction between molten and solid is, the solid will function like a pump. It pumps in and pumps out. So you're really pu pushing like a solid piston into this molten little, little pond inside the hot end. Uh, so you can think of that. But for good thermal contact, you need this little bit of thermal paste. So take this little sachet or whatever they call it. Um, Can I ask a clarification question? Yes. Uh, when you're putting in the solid thing, and then the resistor, I guess, makes it hot, and then it needs to cool down again yep. to become solid again, so that it's like solid, hot, liquid, solid. Uh, it's solid and coming out. It's liquid inside. Well, when it comes out, it's still liquid. Right, but it's about to cool down. Yeah. Got it. And it's actually that it's um, the way the 3D printing works the heat from the top layer melts into the layer below it. That's how the bonding occurs. It's not the fact that the layer below is molten and you're just fusing the next layer. That's a good distinction to understand because what that means is if you stop a print, if a print fails, you can wait like a day and you can return to it because it's the layer that you add to it that melts in. Uh, so that's important to know for the theory of how it works. Um, so. I'll put a little grease on this thing, on the, on the threads all around for good thermal contact. Uh, does anyone know what thermal paste is for real? I don't either. <laughs> no, it must be, I don't know, maybe like molten Teflon or something. I don't know. Something that will give you cancer for sure. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So spread it around, and they emphasize this point, so do do it, because you do want, as we said, you want that good transmission of heat. So you're cooling off in that transitional zone immediately to this heat sink. So do that, how tight, um, what's it say? Screw in the heat sink, it only needs to be hand tight. Don't use thermal paste anywhere else, it says. Like for lube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hand tied, we're done. Gather the following parts: assembled hot end, collet, collet clips. So here, without this part, the, yeah. 
We need that. Without that part, this wouldn't work. So, I mean, this is well engineered, and one thing I found out about this is there's all these clones, and they, they're made a little bit differently, all of them. And it's, it's pretty weird because this is fully open source. You can look at the blueprints exactly, but people copy it and they do it not like this. So you question why. It's one of those things about how technology transfers. And it's probably that people think, oh, it doesn't matter, or, oh, maybe I'm too smart, I don't need that. Uh, but without it, without doing a, like exactly the same, you, you hear a lot, there's a lot of problems with different hot ends getting clogged. Um, so you gotta do this, and it kind of blew me away that none of the, because I mean, I tried the, the clones, and like really, it's hard to find one that works. Um, and you question, well, why don't they copy it? And I think it's kind of like, uh, the diffusion of technology in general is pretty low. Like, we're in this non-collaborative age still. So maybe in the future we get better, but but for now, the clone guys, you'd think they want to do it right because everyone would be buying it from them. Everyone like that's in a know, like, you know, we're, we care about this, so we definitely want to go with the real thing. And all the pros, they do that. They do the real thing. So one of the details that matters is this little clip and the fact that even though this is called an all-metal hot end, it's got plastic in it, you figure. But that's what they call it. It's called an all-metal hot end. Maybe that's what confuses the clone guys because they have, some of them don't have this inside. But this is Teflon. It's a, it's a high-temperature plastic like on a, your Teflon cooking pan. It gives you cancer or something. Uh, but you want to stick it in all the way in to, till it bottoms out against the heat break. So there's a continuous path straight through, like no little gap in between there, because if plastic got in there, if you're retracting, what if that was semi-molten and you were not pulling out? Or if it was semi-molten and you're trying to pull in and it doesn't really pull in. So you want to have that gap closed as much as you can. So you use the Teflon, you cut it off with a very precise length, and then put in this little collet clip. So this is another one of these little tiny things that are absolutely critical, because if you didn't put this this thing actually locks, that clip locks it in. If you didn't lock it in, the Teflon might come in and out and you'd end up getting a clog or something. So you want to cut it off. Let's, so first they insert the little thing, so it's just pressure fit. Just go, just go. <coughs> I almost messed it up. It has four barbs. I put in three, the fourth one. I want to make sure all the four barbs go in. Okay, and just kind of snaps in right away. Um, what happens with the collet clip, if you put the collet clip under it, it pushes, it pulls, and constricts, and that grabs the, the Teflon. So let's look at the length of the Teflon we need. To make, to make sure that the end of the PTFE, that's Teflon tubing, will sit inside your hot end is square and flat, cut a slice off with a very sharp knife, and now they don't tell us the distance. So this is where you actually have to start fitting it to the actual extruder that this is a part of. So this is basically the heating parts. We're almost done with it. We've got the thermistor, which detects the temperature. It, it, it gives feedback to the controller. This is the heat part. That's good. We're up to here. They also say put in the collet clip, because the collet clip allows you to put in the Teflon, but it doesn't allow you to let it out, because it's constricted slightly. Let's, let's test that. So if you put, no, it do, you can't, because it's constricted already. So. Yeah. Um, you want to take that out when you're inserting it. Yeah, it goes in and hold it down to just pull it out. Um, so now let's look at the actual extruder, which is the kind of like the thing with the fan and everything else on it. No, no, go ahead. Where the uh, tap on fit? Yeah. When it's connected to the, I guess like the part that's really hot. Yeah. And, uh, it needs to be connected because the hot part transfers. Like, what's the function of the Teflon? Okay. The Teflon is, is sliding. It, this allows low friction. So it's surface chemistry. I mean, the idea is, I mean, if you can think about a Teflon pan, yeah. do your eggs stick oh, yeah, to super it? Slippery. Super slippery. And it also lets the filament go in through very easily. So there's minimal resistance. That's why if you don't have this, there will be more resistance and you might get clogs more. So that's a sheath so for the filament. It's a sheath. Right. So the and it goes going through it? Through it, yeah. Inside. Through the inside of it. It's got a hole. It's a two by four millimeter thing. Oh, so yeah. But more importantly, it's when, a the, tube. when the filament is, is hot and then it cools and sets in there, you still push it through because of the Teflon. 
Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. And in principle, I think you're supposed to not have a place where, yeah, it's a transition zone, so anything can happen there. So what you said is probably right. If it, even if it's solid, then you can still move it against the top. Is that above the head, or do you just leave it to, for a wire feed, a filament feed? Right. Uh, good question. So let's look at that. We do have a filament feed in this in the system, so I think we can cut it off to to where it allows for the filament feed. So, so this is how this is going to sit in. It's going to sit in like this with the wires facing away because the the sensor is going to be here. What was the question? Uh, do right. You, do you leave the, the Teflon length. tube uh, hanging out so the filament can feed into it? Yeah, I would say yes because the way the extruder is designed, it's got this big hole yeah. there. Uh, so I think we, what we want to do is uh, probably feed it. Yeah, I would feed it so that we just make it stick out. Do you see that? Yeah. So it's, make it even right with that top. And the drive gear is going to be like right there. So we're driving for not like this right even with it okay now we're gonna have to figure out how deep that is so how do we do that well I would stick it in all the way so it goes no more I would kind of fit it by eye and I would cut it off and they say don't use these use a sharp razor because you want a flat cut as opposed to a flattened cut fresh blades here so I will fetch you a sort of dragon glass <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> Sorry. I might be culturally uneducated on that one. So. You gotta start watching my TV. Definitely. So I pushed this all the way in. I should probably, I don't know, we, we might want to just, just do it in place instead of measuring, because measuring is a point of error. So we just say, okay, let's just maybe mark it with your set of. Uh, Markers under your chin. <laughs> so I'll just mark it and so I know where to cut. And, and there's this flange on this, and a flange fits into that flange holder. It fits right against, right against. So if you put it right against the black, uh, then we can mark it, like, say, like, right there. So yeah, that's that. So this is this I would say actually is the most complicated part of the, the whole printer. If we get through this, we'll be good. So I'm gonna cut it. Okay, so that, that gave a pretty cool cool cut without flattening it. And then we're gonna stick it in through and see where it ends up. If it's acceptable. Okay, it's kind of sticking out. Uh, don't like that so let's so see might as well no just cut it a little too long and then maybe trim it to size how about that so I'm gonna trim it to size oh perfect that just cut right off that's, that works really well with that so that's my experience so you got it right there um, so so here we get we get to the point okay but what did I miss I missed that don't forget that and actually I should have put it in before so I don't have to take it out now and now this collet clip allows, so right now I can still pull it out. Um, holding it, yeah, you, you can't pull it out. Uh, so I'm put, putting that clip underneath. Mm -hmm. Make sure the little clip goes underneath. Yeah, that should, should be good. It's, it's kind of. Okay, uh, when I just did that, it had a little bit of a hard time getting on because the collet clip was like pushed in. The, see, the black part was pushed in. So the blue part kind of like spread out a little bit. So I had to push it like back around it. So make sure that when you finally seat the blue part, uh, it's not sticking out much beyond the black. Okay. It's kind of like right under the black, just barely sticking out. And this we should do before we put this in so we don't have to do what I just did. Because it, yeah. You have to turn the collar clip. Okay, yeah, okay, detail. Look at you. you. 
you got good insight. Okay, so the hole here is elongated vertically. Make sure that the collet clip is going to be, so you're going like this with the wires going that way. Make sure the collet clip is vertical, maybe, yeah. maybe vertical this way. Um, going up because the hole, the hole is, yeah, it's got more space going up, so yeah, point it up. Wow, there's a lot of detail in here. So go like that, and pretty much the collet clip kind of goes in that hole. Yeah, so this should be pretty good here. Um, so that's where we are. Assuming that we're finished, so the hot end, it's, it's relatively quick uh, with the thermal paste and all that, but now let's continue. So now the main extruded body. I already messed up here, because, so I need to take it out again. Because the first step of the extruder body, we didn't go in there because we're actually ahead of the game. We weren't supposed to do this yet, but we did. This mounting plate is connected to this tiny M8 screw. So we got labels for the length. This is the M8 screw. Uh, the way it goes, we hacked this, so this is our design, but we, what we do is connect this base plate, this is the magnetic mounting plate that we're supposed to put the magnets on, and we can do that as a step after, but that little screw connects to, through that little hole, okay, and with a little, little nut. Okay, and then take a, take a small screwdriver. So this is a little 3D printed tool holder uh, with a double bit. So you can use one of these. Uh, I've got a bunch of, bunch of these pieces so you can put in the bits and make these. Okay, yeah, so, so just screw this down. Not too tight yet, but the deal is if you don't put that in, you can't put it out after the extruder is in place. So like that. You can still tighten it from this side. Okay, but that's the first thing. So that's that's the number one step. Step one is attach the mounting plate to extruder body. So now this is where the, we need a stepper motor. And we put on that actual other gear that will drive gear for the filament. We've got a bunch of those. So take one of those. Once again, I've got this tiny little screw on them. And then how deep do you do it? You have to kind of match it up against. So it's got this tiny screw in it once more. And it's got just one of them, one tiny screw. And the shaft is flat. OK, that needs to come out more because it's not going on yet. OK. OK. So how deep? I'm going to put it against here and make it go right above the hole uh, compared to the motor. Now, on the stepper motor, we're seeing that the, the plug is pointing this way. Um, it could actually point the other way just as well, right? Because that, that cable is just going an extra way, so we put it this way. Put it this way. But, okay, so we can put in one screw here, and this is where our tool comes in. Let's just hold them. It's a uh, 30. And, and that's the first one is M8. Yeah. So this is just to hold it in. See, he's measuring this here. I wouldn't measure it. I would go match it up against it because there's a step of error. Like I tried measuring the Teflon tube and you see what came out, right? So, okay, so I don't believe in the measurement. Just hold it, I would say just hold it by hand, you know, put it flush, and then you see where, where exactly the, the drive gear is. You can move it, so with this set screw loosened, you can move it in and out. So move it like right above the Teflon tube we just put in there. So there. So I got it in. Let's 
just keep that there. Place extruder in a socket, so we've done that multiple times. Place nuts here, so, okay. So in order to close this, there's a, there's a nut, a square nut that goes into that little, little hole because we're gonna put a cover. So we're gonna cover this with this cover in a second. So we need to catch this bolt that's gonna go through here, through that one. And we're going to need to catch this one on the other side as well. So this is still loose, but there's going to be a, a little nut in that nut catcher here. So this one here, the one that goes through, is a he regular hexagonal one. You can just like push it down. So it's a regular hex one for this one. And then there's a square one for this other hole. Oh, it's already there because I guess I put it in before. <laughs> So we've got this, so now we can, let's see, can I put the cover on? Possibly. No, not yet, because the cover, on top of the cover is going to be a fan, and the fan needs to get screwed into that hole and that hole. So we need to make sure that there's stuff catching it, so put a hex nut into the hole. I'll poke it down. Nope. Doesn't want to stay. Uh, okay, I threw it down there. So we got one inside underneath there. And then here, that's, that you can do later, that's for the fan. But for now, we can use, so we threw those in there. So that's the cover, and we've got M25 and M18. So I like this picture because it gives you the whole overview. That's the cover that we're just working with right now. And it says M18 and M25. So go to M18 right here. It's going to be this shorter one here. That's going to go into that square nut there. You can lock that down. And then the 25, which is right here. One down there. Not the pan head, but the ones with the the Allen wrench hole, so that hole, so you see that goes all the way down. And now it, there's a nut inside there, so maybe like turn it upside down because you got to catch it. And I hear it's, it's floating. So, man, this is complicated. And this is not our design. Because you know, we're, we're going to simplify this. This is too hard. Um, so it doesn't ship with the hardware to put it together? Say what? It doesn't ship with the bolts and stuff to put it together? No, this is, we, this is all 3D printed. It's, this is all ours. Oh, the right. parts, these black parts, that's all That's all 3D printed. I thought the electronics and stuff came with the kit. Uh, so this part, the, the metal and all that, that we got off the shelf, but these we are printing. The nice. whole body and everything oh. else. So this is pretty cool in that sense that it's a super complicated thing that you can get right off of a 3D printer. It all goes together amazingly well, but it's, it's also complicated. So, okay, we've got those. That's great. How about the tensioner? So, so there's a part that pushes down. Against the uh, drive wheel? Yeah, against the drive wheel, which is, you know, we're going to put that on in a second, but we can, we can do this now. So this is the tensioner. Now the tensioner needs this bearing inside of it. So that's that little bearing. And it's also got a shaft, a little sh tiny shaft. That's a little 3D printed oh. shaft. So we go, so tiny little 3D print. Uh, it's got two little, <laughs> two little washers on each side, one washer on each side. And it just snaps in, just like that. So that's, uh, that's cool, because in a bill of materials, it actually calls for you buying like a little wooden dowel. But we're too cool for that. Yeah. No, you can 3D print it, it's <laughs> without a problem. So, put on later. So, okay, so we're gonna put in uh, the idler part. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can put on the motor. Okay, so we didn't talk about the motor here yet. So the 35s are these two. 
and 30 is that. So the 30, 35s go all the way through, uh, through the back. That's why they're 35. The 30 doesn't go through the plate. That's why it's shorter. So, and I am losing the shaft here. Okay, let me put on the motor first, and we'll get back to it. This screw be put through from the motor side. So oh, when you so it anchors into the motor. Got it. Yeah, it anchors into the motor. So the motor's got these four holes in it. Yeah. And we said we're going to take the all the wires going towards the same way. So we're going to go this way. When you're saying 19s and 45s, you're referring to lengths. Lengths. Millimeters. 18 and 35 millimeter long. It's M3 okay. for the screw. So the second one, so altogether the back mounting plate has these three screws. That's the second one for the motor. And a shorter one because it doesn't go through the back plate. Okay, so we got that. What else is missing? So we we ejected our idler, so we put it back in. And kind of keep it pressed against against the driver so you don't we don't lose it again. Now this needs to get tensioned by little springs. M3 by 40. So the 40s are the long ones. Okay, these long ones and these two springs. So we got, yeah, they're actually prepared back there. Now. Okay, so this one, put a washer on each side of it so the spring is pressing against the spring. Washer, and that's that. So now you can hold down. Now, there's two square nuts in there that I already put it before, but that's how they screw in. So they screw in and they go into these square nuts. So now this, this basically puts a tension on the filament going through this little hole. So get it down to, I, mean, I would say, just possibly like close to the end and back it out a little bit. It bottoms out at the end there. So do the second one, spring, these are these oversized, these washers here, so it says yes by them, use those, um, so that, where am I, right here, so do that. What next? We're going to use a, we have a fan. So the fan is going to go such that you can see those are the two mounting positions of the fan. We are already threw in a nut back there. We need a little, little uh, M3 nut back here. But what happens if you flip this? It doesn't work. It only goes one way. So you got to make it go that way. And I'm just pushing in that screw, it kind of stays in there. And that's two M3 by 20. These M3 by 20s are Phillips heads, so they're not the pan, yeah, like the pan head stuff, because they they're not going inside the hole, they're just sitting on top of it. It attaches the fan. And that'll go. So there's that nut catcher mm -hmm. little thing back there. You might have to turn it off to catch it because it might. And I didn't catch it. It's, it's failing to catch. No, it's caught. Yeah. Just turn it upside down to catch it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of difficult. 
Okay, then the fan is blowing down. You want to turn the, the fan to blow across the nozzle. Why do you want a fan? Because if you have a hot print, like if you, if you don't cool, you're going to sag. So for example,